Welcome to KIMP 360 101. In this video, you'll find out how KIMP's custom software makes managing design projects so much easier. Let's get started. To log in, just head over to KIMP360.com and enter your email and password. From here, you'll land onto the KIMP 360 dashboard where you can use the quick access buttons for the six most commonly used features, or you can head over to the left for even more options. Let's take a look at my requests, where you'll have a bird's eye view of a KIMP 360 board, including all of the requests and the workflow, including the request list, the in progress list, the in review list, and the completed list. You'll also notice that there's a drafts list on the far left where you can save design requests until you're ready to move ahead with them. Now it's important to note that if you have just a graphic subscription or video subscription, you'll only have one in progress list as seen on this board. But if you have a Kimp graphics plus video subscription, you'll have two in progress lists as your graphics and videos will be worked on at the same time in two separate queues that don't interfere with one another. Before you start making requests, you'll probably want to invite team members to your board. You can do this via email or by generating unique links to share with them. In either case, you'll just need to select the role that you'd like to give your team members. A client admin can do everything that the owner of a board can, including adding requests and inviting team members, but they will not be able to make any changes to a subscription. A client associate can help make and manage design requests, but they won't be able to invite new board members. And a client viewer can simply view the design workflow and download files. You can view active board members and those that you've invited right over here. Now let's take a look at the cards in each list. A card can be created to submit a design request or to simply ask a question or share a comment with your team. To create a card, select Add Card in the Drafts list or in the Request list. Once you do this, you'll see that there's two options at the top, the Guided Request form and the Question and Comment form. The AI-powered Guided Request form will take you through a series of fields and prompts to help you set up your design request with all the necessary details. And the Question and Comment form is handy when you want to submit any general questions or share comments with your team. Let's take a closer look at how to use the guided request form. First, you'll enter a task title. As you do so, you'll notice that Kim 360s AI will populate the design type in this dropdown. And then it'll also generate options and recommendations for things like dimensions, format, and software to design with. After you make it past these fields, you'll be able to add a brand that you'd like to create your design for. Simply select Add New Brand and enter your brand name. And now you'll be able to share all of your brand's guidelines with us on the left. And you'll be able to upload files like logos and fonts on the right. After you've added everything, just hit Save. And your brand has now been added to your brand collection. This means that you can manage it at any time with the menu on the left. And for all future design requests, your brand will be available in the brand dropdown. So all you'll have to do is click to select. A quick tip here, you can add brands to share guidelines for different marketing campaigns, social media platforms, or even just to capture preferences for print or digital. Next, you'll provide us with a detailed description let us know if there's any text content that needs to be included in your design. If so, you can choose to type your text or upload an editable file with your text. You also now have the option to upload additional assets, which can be specific assets that you want used in this design. And you can upload them directly from a wide range of options, or you can add them from the brand files that you've already uploaded. Similarly, you can add reference files. These are things that you'd like us to take inspiration from when you're working on your designs. I'll show you how to upload a couple of files just to, so you get an idea.
Once you've uploaded your files, you'll be able to provide instructions for the uploaded files all together in one comment field, or you can even choose to provide them separately if there's unique things that we need to know about each one. At this point, you can choose to save your design request as a draft, or you can publish it to the request list. Once a card has been published to the request list, you can duplicate it or save it as a template by hitting the vertical ellipsis on the card to show those options. The duplicate function is handy if you'd like to create a similar task right away. As clicking on it will open the guided request form with the fields pre-filled. But if you're just looking to save a template for an upcoming design request, select Save as Template. And going forward, you'll be able to choose from your templates at the top of the guided request form. Now, when it comes to how we work through your requests, we work through them in the, from the top down as they appear in your request list. So if you'd like to reorder the sequence in which your designs are completed at any point, you can rearrange them by just dragging and dropping the cards. Cards in the request list will be reviewed by your project manager, who will make sure that all the details required to move forward are included. If you're all set, they'll add a ready to process label. Otherwise, they'll apply a details missing label and add a comment to let you know what more is needed. Cards that are ready to process are moved into the in progress list two at a time. Once a card is moved to the in progress list by your project manager, a due date and approximate delivery time will be applied so that you know when you can anticipate seeing your designs. And when your designs are ready for review, your project manager will post all of the requested formats and source files to the request card and then add it to the in review list for your feedback. At this point, there are two ways that you can share your feedback with your team. One is to simply add a comment using the comment field. And this is great for cases like responding to your project manager's request for clarification or providing general feedback. The other is to use Kemp's custom feedback tool when a graphic or video is shared with you for review. Just click on a design that's marked as not reviewed to open the tool. To approve a design, you can simply select approved. So let's approve the first design here. To reject a design, you can select rejected and then you'll be prompted to share some feedback as to why you're rejecting the design. To request revisions, just select need revision and then you can point and click anywhere on the design to provide precise feedback. If you need revisions, you'll leave your card as is in the in review list. Your project manager will have a look and let you know if any clarification is needed and then get your revisions completed by moving your card back to the in progress list. Or if you've approved all of your designs or don't need any further revisions or new versions created, you can move your request card to the completed list. When you move a card to the completed list, you'll receive a prompt to provide some feedback. Let us know what you think in as much detail as possible so that we can do more of what you like and eliminate what you don't. After a card has been moved to the completed list, your project manager will publish all of the approved files to the My Files section of Kemp 360. Here, you'll be able to quickly access and download all the files related to a single request or all of your design requests in one zip folder. Now, that's it for the workflow. Let's take a look at how you can stay in the loop on the activity on your board and keep things organized too. Let's start at the card level. Maybe you'd like to categorize your cards in a particular way. You can create tags to do this. Just open a card and select Add New in the Tags section. You'll be able to enter a tag name, choose a color, and then hit Save. After creating tags, you'll be able to apply them to any of your cards and you'll be able to manage them by navigating to the menu on the left. But wait, there's more. You'll be able to filter cards based on your tags, labels that have been applied, such as ready to process or details missing, and by the due date. This will come in handy as you get more and more designs done. 
You can also create custom lists to organize your design requests based on particular categories. When you create custom lists, they'll appear to the right of the completed list, just like you see this one over here. And you can drag and drop them to change the sequence you'd like them to appear in. You can even drag a, a list all the way over to the left of the drafts list. Or say that you're getting a ton of design requests done and you need to clear up some clutter on your board. You can choose to archive individual cards or entire lists just by selecting the vertical ellipsis. You can choose to archive a card here, or if you go to the top of the custom list, you can actually choose to archive the entire list. When it comes to notifications, there are a few ways to manage these. You can choose to follow specific lists and receive notifications within Kim360 related to activity on these lists. You just have to click on the eye icon at the top of a list, or you can choose to unfollow to remove these notifications. Plus, you also have the option to opt in for email or push notifications too. Just head over to the settings in the left-hand menu and select the types of notifications you'd like to receive for different types of board activity. You can choose from email, push, and alerts. Need to find something in one of your carts? Use the search function that's located at the top of the board or you can hop into the menu on the right-hand side of the board where you'll also find a list of templates. You can see the activity for your board. You can view your archived cards and lists, and you also have the option to follow or unfollow all of the activity on your board. And that about wraps it up for GIMP 360 101. If you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions, please use the support feature in GIMP 360. You can also book a demo call during which a GIMP team member will walk you through how to use GIMP 360 and get the most out of a GIMP subscription. As we continue to enhance and roll out new features, we'd love your feedback.